you finish a tutorial, you're hyped to start up a project, and then you set up everything and you think, now what the heck do I do? I've been there before and I wanna show you a technique that helped me get past this. While I'm focused on game dev, this can be used with any programming language. Let's take a look at what this is and I'll also explain some reasons why I think this helps so much. We're gonna take a look at a document that is from the player script of Kenny's 3D platformer starter kit. I'll have this on my GitHub and I'll put the link to that and the starter kits in the description below. And so one thing I wanna stress here is you're ultimately going and taking code that you have created or you found and you are going through and line by line trying to explain it in plain text. So here we're just looking at the GD, uh, player.gd script as I mentioned here. And this is the top of that script. And as you, as you go down, you'll notice that I have some pretty basic notes here because one of the things about this is this is personalized to you. You wanna take notes that make sense to you. You wanna comment on the things that you need to comment on. There are some things that for me at this point don't make as much sense to comment on because I know them very well. That's why I start off with these are pretty standard variables. Like there's nothing here that I really see that is all that different from stuff I've done before. If this is something that you're not as familiar with, like export and export subgroup and stuff like that, that would be something to comment on. If you're not as familiar with onReady, comment on that. That's why I said of note are the export subgroups because I'm not as familiar with that. The components and the properties create new areas, blah, 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 blah. blah. And then some of these don't have any typing. So ideally I would go back and add an int or a float or bool or whatever. So. I'm just going through and noting things that are important to me. And that's one thing I really wanna stress. This is about explaining code in your own words. What does it mean? What task is it accomplishing? What are the implications of it? Are there any, is there anything odd or unexpected in the code? What areas are you familiar with? Which are you not? And if you're reviewing someone else's code, your previous code or the code from a tutorial, how would you approach this task differently? And the goal here is to make sure that you're internalizing what this code means. And you'll see how I did this as we go along. And this is one thing that really helped me get past the whole getting started with a project. And speaking of projects, I have created a Steam page for my first game. It is called Radiant Bricks. It is a brick breaker style game where ultimately you have to change the color of the ball to hit the different color bricks. I will have a link to that in the description and pinned comment below if you want to take a look. And if you're interested, please wish list away. And I hope to have more devlogs on it soon. So the next section here, it's just the physics process of this. But as you look at my notes, you'll notice I have significantly more. And this is where you will start to come some, to some more tips momentarily, but you'll notice I have a lot more than I'm talking about. I'm mentioning that the physics process is function is called multiple times frame, but less than the process function. Ideally, I need to add the underscore there and underscore to physics process, which I start doing later. But no, you'll, I added a little note here, I believe. Um, but ideally, this is something where I would not want to actually have that note. I'd want to know for sure the reason I put I believe here is because ultimately this is exactly what the process function does. So I'm fairly certain it's doing the exact same thing. I just haven't actually confirmed that. But that's why you multiply that by delta, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, if you want to look at this and kind of see what I'm talking about, like I said, we'll have the link below. But I talk about the functions later on. I felt like it was better to talk about those when they're actually defined. And then the lerp, and I note, just note what the lerp is, because I was thinking about this and I'm thinking like lerp versus tween and trying to kind of think about what the difference between those really is. And so, you know, as I noted here, this is something right here that I noted that I thought was kind of odd because the gravity is being applied. The negative is getting the inverse value. And since the current value is positive, this will result in a negative Y value. So it's, this is one thing that you'll see mentioned a couple of times if you review this, because the gravity, the way the gravity is done, in my opinion, it works. But for me personally, I would have 
probably made the gravity negative just to keep in mind that the gravity is going to ultimately be what pushes the character down. So that's probably the way I would have went, but it's just a personal preference in what Kenny did in his code here. This is something where I thought that was something that would confuse me potentially in the future. Again, this is why I made these notes. And then, you know, I went ahead and, and defined some other things. And as I scroll down, you'll notice this gets a bit smaller because it's just a couple of lines. And there are a few reasons that I really like this. First, it forces you to put your ideas into words. I know for me, sometimes I can really leave a section of code very abstract. And like I say, the focus here is to write what the code means to you. And ideally you would be able to hand this document to someone else and they would be able to understand what you understood about the code and what the code is trying to do. Obviously it's gonna vary by skill level because you are gonna make different notes at different skill levels. Secondly, ideally this exercise will make you check the docs and anything that you aren't 100% certain of, you should confirm in the docs or elsewhere to confirm you're correct. Like I talked about the physics process, that's where I would really want to go and look that up and just confirm that I am actually right about that. And you could look that up and you could compare it to the process function, all that stuff. Whatever learning direction you ended up going, that would be great. And third, you can see what you know and also what you don't know. And that is really kind of understanding what you understand, which is a huge step in the right direction when it comes to learning programming. And so coming down to a little bit further in this page, you have the jump function and you have gravity equals negative jump strength. And so my notes about this, this is why I talked about the gravity earlier. Likewise, the jump strength is seven here, but here it's being made negative. In the physics process, it's called negative gravity. gravity meaning we have gravity equals negative jump or gravity equals negative seven. And then applied velocity dot y is negative gravity. In other words, applied velocity y is negative negative seven or simply seven. So that's why I uh, I thought it was a bit weird the way this worked out. And it's the way the, the forces are applied ends up being something that's a little weird to me, but I get what it's doing, but it is important I think to note things like this, because I think coming back to this code, you could get really confused if you were trying to kind of look at this and just figure out why it's working because you are going to that negative, negative value. And the fourth reason is you can look back at your code later and see how your thoughts have changed. If there was something you struggled with before, you may be able to explain it better now. And you probably put different emphasis on parts of the code. Different experience levels are probably gonna have different focuses when they do this exercise. That is the thing that I find so cool about this is that ultimately anybody can do this. I can still do this as kind of the late beginner stage, early intermediate stage and get something out of it. I can focus on more complex things while a beginner can really focus on the basic building blocks of what's important to them and what they're having trouble with. And I think when you're struggling to understand things like what certain functions do that are built into the API that you're working with or what a variable is doing, that is really valuable to really just go through and describe it all in words. I did have some ideas to take this a little bit further. So you could use this to explain code to a friend that is also learning game dev or programming. You could even both of you do different things where both of you do the same code and compare notes and just see what you can learn from each other. But for real, I mean, what is a friend, right? And like I was talking about before, you can make sure that you can note code that surprises you or that you find particularly tricky or if something unexpected is done in the code or if you learn something new. All of these are great options to include in your notes and are really important to take away what you can from the code. Because like I say, the really important thing here is to write what the code means to you and know what the implications are of that code and how you may be able to take advantage of that in your project. And it's more about learning what the code does as opposed to looking at the exact code itself. I don't know that this really has a name. I've come to call it like just explaining code or 
uh, potentially code annotation would be something you would call it. It's a form of, a, I believe it's a form of reflective learning where you're ultimately learning from yourself and from your own thoughts. And I think that's something else that is really powerful about this because it is work you already completed in the form of tutorial, or it's work that you found uh, another code set for. You're kind of taking that and just adding an XP multiplier onto the end of it. That's why I think it's really cool. And that's why I think it's really useful to do, especially for beginners. Is this a method you've tried before? Is this something that you want to try to do? Comment below with your thoughts. And if you do end up trying this, comment below and let me know what you thought about it, what you learned, because that's what the goal of this exercise really is, is to help you learn code faster. If you're curious about getting started with Godot, you can take a look at my high-level Godot tips video here. As always, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I will see you next time.